half, and this is a eight and a half foot ceiling. And then the closet dimensions will be 7.2 by 2.2. So 2.2 depth, 7.2 width. And then the closet door size, I think it's from the 28 on that one. The main door is the 36. There is no closet too, so I'll skip that. And then the windows are 32 by 48. All right. So once I have all the dimensions, let me just call this bedroom two, give it a label. And then it uh, specifies in detail what materials or what's the approach for rehabbing the, the room itself. And then at the bottom, it has a detailed list of the master uh, materials list. One of the things that I'm learning to do with leveraging power apps and real estate investing is using power apps to build different applications needed, especially in the construction process. So we can also build power apps and we've done use power apps to build things to manage budget, to track tasks with different crews and different vendors, uh, and also in construction. So what you see here, this is an example of a home that we fully gutted, took all the trash out, removed all the items. And now what I've done is build a power app to one, help me track and pre-order materials. One of the things in real estate, for those who are getting into real estate investing or are familiar with real estate investing, the construction process is one of the critical pieces. And the more materials and the more items you have on site for the construction crew, they can just move that much faster. So in it, for example, in this room here, we have to measure the room. This room was completely gutted, no studs. And we had to, based on the measurements or the dimensions of the room, um, if we were framing up a new wall, uh, it would, we need to calculate how many studs we need, how many seal plates at the top we need, how many uh, bottom plates we need, how many studs, you know, assuming they're 16 inches off center, how many rolls of insulation is needed, uh, understanding that there's different types of insulation. There's insulation for the ceiling. There's thicker insulation if the room is a top floor room for that ceiling versus a main floor that has a living area on top of it. Uh, again, different types of insulation. Uh, the amount of insulation is needed. When you look at uh, different things like uh, the the roof rafters, um, and the uh, the joists, like the hangers, and the number of headers and cripples you need uh, within the framing. All of this information has to be uh, considered when ordering materials, even down to the plumbing, uh, the number of feet, linear feet you need for hot water and cold water lines, uh, the different sizes of um, the lines that are needed. We simplify it because we only use PEX plumbing. Uh, for this, so you know, it will calculate the amount of uh, linear feet needed for PEX plumbing and how much of the run you need in three quarters versus how much of the run you need in half inch supply line. Also, when it comes to the different electrical boxes, uh, when for a given wall, you're especially when you're dealing with outlets, your outlets have to be at least um, six feet apart and in some cases, six feet from the, the current entrance. And if you have a long wall with no break, um, you know, per the code here in Ohio, uh, you can have them as long as 12 feet. So those are going to be like the minimum, but you can play anywhere in between there. So given the measurements, right? So what we end up doing, we end up having the architect draw up the drawings uh, for a particular house. And before we were using spreadsheets. So we would have like a spreadsheet and we would have to do all these weird calculations uh, to measure like the walls, the number of windows, the size of the windows. And then, you know, the number, you know, if we had closets and then the number of doors and so on and so forth. And every door you have to account for a uh, trim uh, on the front and back of the door, the doorknob, the door stops, like on all the hardware. The same with outlets and switches. You have to calculate the rough in boxes, uh, the, the outlets, the switches, the amount of cable needed to wire it up. Uh, if you have ceiling fans, recessed lighting, whatever type of lighting you're going to do, uh, as well as the windows, you know, the size of the window, the trim of the window, the casing of the window, and all the measurements that's needed. It's, you know, once you break it down into chunks, it's manageable, but you end up with a bunch of calculating. Then you have to calculate the amount 
of paint needed to actually paint the walls. You know, how many gallons of paint do you need? How many gallons of paint you need for the ceiling versus the walls versus the trim? Okay, so now what we would do is take a, take a look at this floor plan. And for example, uh, let's just say we're going to build this room here. So this was what we call bedroom number two. Uh, these are the dimensions. And then you have a closet and then you have a doorway. Then you have a door for the closet. And we would just uh, calculate this. So the overall room dimensions would be 10 by 10 and a half. And this is a eight and a half foot ceiling. And then the closet dimensions will be 7.2 by 2.2. So 2.2 depth, 7.2 width. And then the closet door size, I think he's from the 28 on that one. The main door is a 36. There is no closet too, so I'll skip that. And then the windows are 32 by 48s. All right. So once I have all the dimensions, let me just call this bedroom two. Give it a label. Okay, so it takes about 90 seconds, almost two minutes for this to respond back. So this is probably a scenario where it's good to email the results versus having the user wait for the results. But we waited, and here it, um, it highlights brief uh, executive summary of the room. The, the, so it confirms the dimensions of the room. It confirms that there's a closet. It also confirms the number of windows. And then it uh, specifies in detail what materials or what's the approach for rehabbing the the room itself. And then at the bottom, it has a detailed list of the master uh, materials list. So here we have uh, the number of studs that are needed. So it says 36 studs and it price them out per stud and the total price for, for that. And it also prices out uh, the number of the amount of nails are needed. And again, this is AI just being smart. This is why you want to use um, the four, GPT-4 model because it, it makes some correlation uh, with um, the number of nails per stud that's needed. And then from there, it doesn't, uh, it anticipates how many boxes of nails, framing nails you would need. And then we also provided a description of the size of the nails and then the price per box. So, and then the quantity in the box. So from there, it knows that it needs one box for that. It also highlights the amount of R13 and R30 insulation. And again, 13 is for the walls and 30 is for the ceilings. Um, it also uh, specified the LVP flooring, uh, the underlayment. So if you ever did like luxury vinyl plank flooring, uh, you know there is like an underlayment that's needed. Uh, this assume again, this is part of our materials list where we tell it, say, hey, we use LVP flooring and the underlayment is attached. And this is the price per square foot we get. So it will calculate how, how many, um, what's the average price that you would need. So we didn't specify like the number of slabs are in the carton because I know that would vary. But ideally, you know, based off of this number, you would know how many cartons uh, of under LV LVP to pick up. And then we have the uh, shoe molding. Uh, then it goes into all the mill work for the baseboards, casing of the windows, all the details that's needed for the closets. Now, here's another thing. So it, it has the, the size of the closet. Uh, we didn't put in there like a, a closet system, like what we're going to use for shelving, what we're going to use for hanging clothes and stuff like that. So we need to add that in. But we did specify that every closet will have a light uh, and will also have... Um, you know, a door. So because of that, you know, specify the, the recess light is going to be a four inch and then it's going to have a door and then the door actually requires a knob and then the door also requires a door stop. So just the fact that we told it that there's a door, it knows that all the pieces or components that are needed uh, for that door. And then we get out to the wall and then it specifies number of gallons for wall. It understands that we use three different colors, right? So we have one color for the wall, one color for the ceiling, and then one color for the actual trim. And it specifies all of that. And then it goes into everything that you need for drywall. Not only does it specify the number of four by eight sheets that you need for drywall, but also the mixes that are needed, right? So you got joint compounds. So you got the all-purpose joint compound, aka the green top, as well as the ready mix, the blue top, and then you have the easy sand uh, joint compound, which I think is is either for sanding or taping. I'm not a drywall expert. I just know from my drywallers these are the pieces that they ask 
And then I asked ChatGPT when to use green, when to use blue, and when to use this sandbag or lightweight 45-minute uh, um, easy sand a bag. And it figured all that out, and it figures out based on the number of drywall sheets that you have, uh, how much of each one of these per square foot uh, that you would use as far as materials and go from there. So once we kind of put this in practice, what we would do is just kind of test this uh, and see the materials that we provide versus the amount that's actually being used uh, just to kind of see how we gauge it. But this is going to help us a ton uh, just knowing how much materials to order and to ensure all the materials that are needed to get the job done are actually on site and we're keeping our c contractors out of Home Depot or out of Lowe's or any of the other big box stores. So outside of that, you know, it gets into the electric, the roughness are needed for uh, the electric. Not only does it calculate the number of feet of wiring that's needed, it also knows the type of wiring that's needed. Um, you know, it could be 14-2, it can be 14-3, it can be 10-2, it could be 10-3, 12-2, 12-3, so on and so forth. And all of that is depend on, you know, the amp rating of the uh, uh, fixtures, right, outlets or switches that you're using. And for bedrooms, that's 15 amps versus 20. If you're using 20 amp fixtures, then your wiring has to be, you know, have to match that amperage. Um, and then it talks about the electrical boxes that are needed as well as, um, you know, the number of two gang boxes that are needed, right? Two gang boxes is where like for these rooms, you're going to have a center light and then you're going to have, um, recess lights. And because of that, those are on two separate switches. So what we do is, uh, there's a box that will have two switches inside of it. That's what we call the two gang box. So it calculates all of that. It calculates the amperage needed for the outlets and then, uh, not amperage, I'm sorry, how many outlets you need it and it specify what amps to get for the outlets, how many switches are needed and it specify the amperage to get for the switches. And these are going to match the, um, the wiring that's needed for it. So here at grand total, and this is materials only is 142827. And then from there, uh, you know, we would then upload or in the addition to this upload, we would have our uh, labor costs. So then you kind of get the full pricing for this particular project. So to rehab, to build a brand new room in materials, you're looking at about $1,429 if I round up. Now, what does that look like from a prompt perspective? So here I have a SharePoint list that have all of the prompts. And if you click inside of this, uh, this is where you can see the details of the prompt. And this prompt is very extensive and very detailed, right? So um, for the doors, we talk about, you know, the panel, um, the two panel doors. So we specify that. We also specify the trim kit needed for each and every door, um, so on and so forth. So a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of detail. And again, this is why the prompt size is so important. So unfortunately, you... You, especially when dealing with chat GPT, you kind of have to find that balance, right? So do you need the 4.0 model uh, where the smaller prompt size, so a lot of this information may not um, fit, right? Because if you need a detailed response, then you kind of have to figure out where you're going to use your tokens. Are you going to use your tokens on the prompt side? Or are you going to leverage your tokens on the response side? Because collectively, they have to fit within a certain window, right? So, but with the GPT 3.5, we're up to 16,000 tokens, where I think in four, at the time of this video, we're only up to 8,000 tokens. But then when you look at other AI models like um, Claude by Anthropic, they have a hundred thousand token, right? So, which is a totally different game. But then you question, yeah, I can throw out a lot of data, but how smart is the AI model? And that's where 4.0 GPT 4.0 always seem to win. So, in this scenario, I think this prompt is way too big for what we need because we have both uh, the prompt itself. A lot of granular detail on how we'll treat each component of the room. But then we have this materials list at the bottom that specifies the quantity and the price for each item uh, in the materials. But that didn't leave a lot of room for the labor, right? So now I have to run it again and uh, get the labor. But even with this material list, I'm thinking of breaking it out to where I have 
rough in materials for HVAC, plumbing, electric, a separate one for framing, and then a separate one for finishes. And finishes would be drywall, baseboards, shoe molding, flooring, and then all of the punch out stuff like the knobs, the door knobs, and uh, door stops, hinges, and so on and so forth. Because then at each one of those chunks, I can get in much granular detail. But for now, this is not a bad start. So just imagine if you have a, um, you know, some type of, of production or assembly or some type of estimating process where you're putting together these different widgets and those widgets require so many materials for each widget and you want to produce, you know, X number, how would you do that in the artificial intelligent way? And this is an example of that. So hopefully this was very helpful. Uh, any questions, just let me know and I'll see you in the next video.